four uh, verses through John 1, one of my favorite books and uh, something to remember in review about the book of John, the reason the tone of John is very different the Matthew, Mark, and Luke is the fact that the revelation of the church was given to Paul around 58 to 60 A.D. The gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke were written before that revelation of the gospel, the church. So in John, John is writing about the events of Christ's life, of course, but from the perspective that now he knows about the church. That's why in, in Matthew, the fellow asked the Lord what I must do to inherit eternal life. And the Lord said, you know the commandments, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not steal. And he went through the commandments. So part of the commandments in Matthew, the Lord told that fellow, you had to keep the commandments to inherit eternal life. But John don't say that. So See, the church has been revealed when John is written. And the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. So, see, the difference now, it's gone from keeping the commandments to believe. The Bible said that Jesus Christ became the end of the law for righteousness. When John was writing this, uh, we no longer got our righteousness from the law. We got our righteousness from Jesus Christ. That don't mean the law was bad or that the law was done away with. The Bible says the law is holy and pure. Uh, and the law uh, reveals, it becomes a schoolmaster and reveals God to us. And one of the, uh, the things that got me saved was, was the Sunday school teachers teaching those Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. And I began to see the holiness of God and then I began to see myself in relationship to that that I wasn't holy. The Bible says that, that the law became a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. So here we are in the book of John and it's different than Matthew, Mark, and Luke into the fact that the church had been revealed. The church had been revealed for about 30 years when John wrote his account of Christ's life here in the gospel. Remember now that uh, in Matthew had Jesus Christ as the king. In Mark, Jesus Christ as a servant. In Luke, you had Jesus Christ as the son of man. And then here in John, he's the son of God, the deity of Christ. In the beginning was the word. He was with God from the beginning. And the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was a light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Wow. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The, came, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that lighteth every man, that, uh, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. But that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. They're talking about the Jew. The Lord came to the Jew, his his ministry, uh, you'll read his Matthew ministry, was preaching the kingdom of heaven to the Jew. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That physical, literal, visible, earthly kingdom that one day the Lord is going to rule. He'll sit on the throne of David and rule with a rod of iron as king of kings, lord of lords. Uh, the prophet Isaiah said, Unto us a son, a son is given, unto us a child is born, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of his uh, government. He said there will be no end to sit upon the throne of David, to order and establish it. He, this is our King, Jesus Christ. And here we see in the book of John, he is also the Son of God. 
I think we ended up in about uh, verse 19. So we'll read from verse 120. Let me read up to there. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, that's a Jew, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Uh, there, that eliminates a false teaching that everyone is a, is a child of God. We're all God's children. In a creative sense, that's true. But we lost our family relationship with God when Adam sinned. Adam, Adam was created in the image of God. He had a live body, a live soul, and a live spirit. And the Lord told uh, Adam and Eve, said, Of all the trees of the fruit of the garden thou mayest freely eat, except for the tree that is in the midst of the garden thou mayest not eat, for in the day that ye eat thereof ye shall surely die. Well, they ate of the tree, but they lived physically. They didn't die, did they? Adam lived another 800 years, but something died. His spirit died. We know his soul didn't die because the Bible says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and yet lose his own soul? So his soul didn't die, his body didn't die, but that spiritual image of God died. He said, The day that ye eat thereof ye shall surely die. That's why Jesus Christ is called the second Adam because from the time Adam lost the image of God lost that spiritual image from that time until the time Jesus Christ shows up in Bethlehem no one on the earth had the image of God Jesus Christ is referred to as the last Adam the second Adam the first Adam was was of the earthy earthy of, was of the earth earthy the last Adam was a quickening Spirit, that's Jesus Christ. Hmm. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, when you trusted Jesus Christ, your spirit was quickened. That means it was made alive again. And that, that alive spirit quickened uh, your soul, and, and, and that Holy Spirit of God uh, indwells you and, and intertwines with your human spirit. And that soul and spirit is cut loose from the body of flesh, according to Colossians 2. You're a new creature in Christ. And now, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. You're born again back into the family of God. Remember Nicodemus? He said, oh Lord, we know that thou art a teacher sent from God, for no man can do these miracles except God be with him. And Jesus said, well, unless except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Duh. And he said, marvel not that I said you must be born again. So we, when we were born, we were born. Now, uh, it says that, that Adam, after the fall... He begat sons and daughters after his likeness and after his image. No longer in the image of God, but after his image, the fallen image. So we're born in the image of Adam. The Bible says, as in, in Adam all, all have died, in Christ all are made alive again. So whenever we trust Jesus Christ, we're renewed back into the image of God. Back into the family of God. To as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. How do you, how do you receive him? By believing on his name. I love that, that, that verse, but you understand now that family relationship is conditioned upon the new birth. You've got to be born again back in to the family of God. All right, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. You can't will your way into heaven. You'll see a, 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 lot, of, a lot of that folks think that you can meditate, and you do yoga, and you meditate, and you meditate, and you meditate, and you can just will your way into heaven. That, Bible, that verse just said it's not by the will of man can't will your way into heaven. You, you, you can, can will it all you want until the cows come home won't get you to heaven. 
Let me move on. We've already gone uh, through this. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. That's that birth of God to as many as received him. You're born of God. We, we talked about a term called the impeccability of Christ. Could Jesus Christ have sinned? It's an interesting study. There's a couple books by Richard D. Hahn and M.R. D. Hahn way back 40 years ago probably. And the fact, could Jesus Christ have sinned? It's called the impeccability of Christ. And there's differing opinions among the church of, uh, about it. But the Bible says that which is born of God cannot sin for his seed remaineth in him. And I read that verse and I said, but man, I know I sinned. I sinned on the way home tonight. What's that about? The body hadn't been redeemed yet. In fact, Paul said one day that he, he would change our vile body into his glorious body. So the soul and the spirit have been redeemed. They've been cut loose from the body of flesh. And the sins that are committed by the flesh are not imputed to the new creature. Our lives are hid in God, in Christ, in God, with God. Blessed is the man to whom God will not impute sin. So the body is still sinful, hadn't been redeemed. Paul called it a vile body. Paul said, I know that within me, that is within my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Hmm. Let me move on. I'm kind of having fun. I may just kick off and preach here. Uh, and the Word was made flesh. Who's that? That's Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Part of the Godhead, Jesus Christ. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten. Who is that? Jesus Christ. The only begotten Son is Jesus Christ. The only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. My, my, my. Grace for grace. There was, uh, throughout the ages, even though there's different covenant agreements, God had, if you look at the Adamic covenant, the covenant that had, God had with Adam, he had a covenant with Abraham. In fact, the Bible says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. He told Moses, said, I'm, I tell you what, here's these Ten Commandments, you guys keep the Ten Commandments and I'll give you my righteousness. Jesus Christ showed up and the Bible said that Jesus Christ became the end of the law for righteousness. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, paid our sin debt, we no longer get our righteousness by keeping the law. We get our righteousness by trusting in Jesus Christ. Law is still pure and holy, but we just don't get our righteousness from the law. And, and I said that to say this, all the way through it's always been God's grace. From grace to grace. It's always been the grace of God. But different uh, covenant agreements. And uh, where were we? And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It says, John bear witness of him. And cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. That's the eternity of Jesus Christ. I remember in verse 1, uh, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, in John 8, 58, the Lord said, Before Abraham was, I am. Jesus Christ is eternal. In the bosom of the Father. He's called the Ancient of Days in Daniel 7, 9. In Genesis, he said, let us make man in our image. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Uh, for there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And three that bear witness on the earth. The water, the blood, and the Spirit. Jesus Christ is, 
He was all man, but he was all God. The Bible said, The Lord said unto my Lord. God the Father speaking to God the Son. God, the Lord said, Who thought it not robbery to be equal with God? Even though it's one God. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. All right, let me move on. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace, for the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The grace of God was revealed. My. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And verse 20 says, And he confessed, and denied not, but confessed that I am not the Christ. I'm not the Christ. And I'll read down to 24, and we'll talk about those uh, few passages here for a few minutes. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. And then said they unto him, Well, who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. All right, we'll look, just spend a few minutes on, on that passage. Now, this is a religious crowd. Now, they're hearing all these stories about John the Baptist, and this is a crowd of Pharisees that didn't want anybody messing with what they had going on. They had a pretty good thing going on, just like many of the religious circles do today. They don't want anybody messing with what they got going on. And uh, this is a religious crowd that shows up trying to figure out what, what the deal is with this guy named John the Baptist. And It says, and he confessed... And denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Now the Lord, the Lord spoke about this, this crowd of Pharisees in Matthew 21, 32. And this is the religionist uh, who also refused John's baptism. Do you remember that? Uh, Matthew 21, 32, it said, For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. And this is the same group responsible for the Lord being arrested and that plotted to have him killed. It's a religious leadership of the day. There's been more souls, I, I fear, condemned to hell through religion than all the bar rooms in the country. Don't get me wrong, wrong about every sin that's, that goes on. And many, uh, most of those are fostered in the, bar, in the bar room. But it wasn't that crowd down at the bar that crucified Christ. It was the religious leaders that crucified Christ. You've got to watch out for that. God, God, uh, God don't want a pretense of religion. God wants a changed heart and a tender heart and a loving heart and a caring heart and a heart that is given to God. And he wants you to fall in love with him. He wants you to fall in love with his word. And he wants you to live just as close as what that book tells you to live. I've, I've never been a huge fan of organized religion. I've seen too much craziness in it as a street uh, policeman in Miami, I, I never had a very high opinion of a lot of the churches. Even a, 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 up here when I came back home and, and worked for the sheriff's department and some of the agencies, if somebody's house burnt down at night, I didn't call the churches because it had taken me about uh, two weeks to have, have two or three board meetings, committee meetings, to see whether they could give $100. But I could I could walk in I could walk into the American Legion into the bar room and take my trooper hat off and hand pass it around and I'd have three hundred dollars in that hat before I left. What's that about? Just thought I'd throw that in, no extra charge for that little story. 
And this is a religionist who refused John's baptism. And the same group responsible for the Lord being arrested and plotted to have him killed. Luke 23, 2. And they began to accuse him saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. See, that's a crowd that's questioning John. Mark 5, uh, in verse 10, it says, For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. But the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto him. It's the same uh, crowd that sent, was sent to question John. Same group that arrests Peter and John uh, and has them whipped over in Acts 540. He forbids them, they forbid them to preach the gospel in Acts 418. Boy, it's nice when your government leaves you alone to preach the gospel, brother. Uh, Steve was talking about that tonight. He's got a kind of a user-friendly to his church over there, user-friendly government. That's real important. We went several years in, the, in, in our country here where, man, it, they were, were coming down pretty hard on Christians. I mean, the Christians were being run in the closet and, and everything else was being glorified. All the things that God calls abominations was being glorified while the church was being pushed in the closet and they didn't want to hear anything about Jesus Christ. They didn't want to hear anything uh, uh, about uh, somebody uh, being against abortion or against the homosexual agenda. They didn't want to hear that because they had their own thing going on. And what was going here, the religious crowd didn't want to hear anything about uh, another kind of gospel. They had a good thing going. They had a good living. They, the folks, they liked the chief seats in the marketplace. They, they, they wanted people to recognize them. Boy, they, they wore that outfit where everybody knew who they were. They were a pretty proud bunch. For he knew, Mark 5.10, knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. Envy. But the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. Same crowd that arrests Peter and John, has them whipped, forbids them to preach the gospel in Acts 4.18, and then tries to kill Paul over in Acts 23, verse 13 to 21. Now, now notice John the Baptist in verse 20, he said, I am not the Christ. They came right out and asked him, and he said, no, I'm not. He told them he was not the Messiah. Now, they knew the Messiah would come, uh, come to earth. You'll find that in John 4, 25. They knew that the Messiah would come, but John said, I'm not him. I'm not the Messiah. Uh, you know, and the ones that killed Christ ask him the same question. Mark 14, 61. I think I've got these in your notes. Mark 14, 61 and 62. He was not Elijah. He said he wasn't. What Christ said about that, uh, Matthew 17, 11, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall come first and restore all things. And, and we'll talk about this a little bit. It's kind of confusing. He said, but I say unto you that Elias is already come, is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. All right, I've got down Malachi 4 and verse 5. That Old Testament prophet said, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Well, John the Baptist said, I'm not Elijah. That's not who I am. Jesus said he was. I've got Luke 1, 17 down. It's what the angel told Zacharias about John the Baptist. That's, that, is, that is his daddy, Zacharias and Elizabeth. It says, and he shall go, I'm in Luke 1, 17, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of, of Elias. So John the Baptist said he wasn't Elias, but obviously he came in the spirit and the power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. 
All right, I'll ask you, is Jesus Christ uh, in the flesh present with us today? No, but he's here in spirit. If you're a born-again believer, he indwells every one of us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, so John the Baptist here represented the spirit and the power of Elijah is the best that I can read this, the best that I can see in it. He told them that he was not Elijah and that he was not that Elijah the Tishbite in Ahab's time, but was there in the spirit and power of Elijah fulfilling the prophecy. God told them he was not the Christ. He was not Elijah. He was not that prophet. Acts 3.22 uh, talks about a prophet like unto Moses. And so the Jews, when they asked if he was that prophet, they were talking about the one prophesied about that was to come. And uh, in fact, in Deuteronomy 18, Deuteronomy 18, 17 to 19, God had promised that prophet, that's how it was referred to, to the nation of Israel around 1500 B.C., uh, John one twenty two, Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. So John the Baptist was himself a priest of, of the seed of Aaron, and by law, he should only be examined by other priests. Hmm. So the questioners here were out of line to begin with. They didn't really have a right to press to question him. You'll find that in uh, Malachi 3, 1 to 3. So here we see the self-righteous, self-important, narcissistic religious leaders of the day the same crowd that crucified Christ, the same crowd that insisted that he be crucified, the same crowd that said free Barabbas. They're trying to figure out who John the Baptist is. So here we see this crowd asking John who in the world that he thought he was. He said in verse 23, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. Mm. It's, it's a shame that... Here's what we see with religious leadership, pharisaical, like it was in Christ's time. We see what happens with that kind of leadership in the church today. The Bible says in the last days many would fall away called the apostasy of the church and we're in those times a lot of the, the, the churches have just fallen away they've fallen away from uh, God's word new Bible versions uh, every month they're, they're embracing and in, indulging a whole bunch of craziness the church a hundred years ago would have never embraced so you got to watch out for the religious hierarchy there's, there's still the Pharisee crowd. They're more interested in, in what, what you look like, how you dress, how much money you've got. And, and it comes, a lot of it comes down to power. We see the power struggle in the politics today. World politics, it's all about power. And that's what it was here in the early church when Christ came. They weren't expecting, he didn't fit, Jesus Christ did not fit uh, the mold, the profile that they were looking for for a Messiah. They were looking for a military superstar to take them out from under the Roman bondage. And here you've got a man born in a barn, carpenter's kid. He didn't fit their profile. That who? This is isn't this Joseph's kid? Duh. They rejected him. Got to watch out for religious leadership. God gave you a book. Yet be intimate with it. Read it. My mom's uncle, 
think it was, I think it was Blevy Gabbard, that's Dorothy Farrell's dad, told my mama years ago, said, Maggie, and she is going to different churches, said, Maggie, you get you a Bible, and you read that Bible, and it'll tell you how to live. Don't go by what some man tells you. You go by what that book says. There's a thing over in Peter that talks about the church day, the priesthood of the believer. A fellow can get saved. An old farmer can be laying out under that shade tree at lunchtime with a jug of water by him and, and have his lunch at the end of a, a row of a field he just plowed and he can get to out that old King James Bible and open it up. May have just been saved two or three years and God will show that man something from that book that he hasn't showed any religious scholar in history. Wow. God is no respecter of persons. Love the Lord. Love his book. I'm not going any further tonight. But I, I love the book of John. There's some pretty good meat. The further uh, down we get in, into it, some pretty good meat there in the book of John. But remember, it's different because it was written later. The gospel had already been revealed. The, the church had been revealed to the apostle Paul. And now it's no longer keep the commandments, but believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, one day the disciples asked the Lord, this is in John, John 6, 28. <clears throat> they said, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Now that's a fair question for anybody in, in, in any Christian denomination. That's a fair question. That's a question everyone wants answered. What, they asked the Lord, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? I mean, we, don't we all want to work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said, This is the work of God that you believe on him whom he hath sent. Too easy, isn't it? Isn't that outrageous, the simplicity of Christ? Remember when he talked about Rahab over there in, in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11? said, And the, the harlot Rahab... She was listed in the hall of faith over there and says she perished not with them that believed not. Duh. The ones that perished were the ones who believed not. That's the one who perishes today. They believe not. No hope of eternal life. Condemned. And this is the combination. The light is coming into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Jesus came to seek and to save sinners, Paul said, of which I am chief. Believe. Trust him. Good book. In fact, the book of John, it says of itself, these are written. These are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, and that believing you might have life through his name. Pretty wild, isn't it? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Thank you for your mercy and grace uh, tonight, Lord. Thank you for our missionary, uh, Brother Arcega, Lord. We pray that you'd uh, bless him and make a way for him and provide needs there, Lord, and, and give him traveling mercy, Lord, as he goes about uh, for the gospel's sake, Lord, and for the cause of Christ. And we'll thank you and praise you for all you're going to do. Uh, help us to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Savior, Lord, and, and hold me up by the power of your might. We pray for those who are sick. We lift uh, Sister Fancher up for her surgery tomorrow, Lord, and uh, Dorothy Harrison and all those names we brought forward tonight. Pray for little Joanna that you'd continue to heal there. And We'll just thank you and praise you and give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Anybody mad because we quit early tonight? All right. I'm so mad.